Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Electrifying Tomorrow webinar. I am your host, Peter Haddock from Content With Media. And what is welcome, what is going to actually be the most electric presentation you have ever seen? I'm certainly going to be talking through a lot of really exciting positive news from Volvo and SMG positive news from Volvo, sorry, and SMTGB, so strap yourselves in. But before we get to the presentation, I'd like it to tell you I'm overly excited myself, so please take your coffee cups and put them to the side because we don't want to spill them on your keyboard. And if you're listening on this on a smart device, then you might want to keep a tight grip because it's going to be a supercharged presentation. If you've never used the Zoom webinar before, let me give you some top tips. As an attendee, you will not be able to talk during this webinar, but you will be able to add a question into the QA function at any time during the presentation. In order to do this, you will see at the bottom of the Zoom screen, a series of buttons. Simply click onto the Q&A button and ask a question, entering your name and question. So without further ado, Let's get on with the main electric presentation. We don't only think about the future, we build it. Well, folks, that is an electric introduction. And um, today we're going to be talking with both Volvo and SMTGB's electric mobility webinar with their key people. And to start us off, I'm joined by Sin, who's the lead engineer of Volvo CE, who's specialist in the electro mobility. Well, Sin is going to actually know an awful lot about how that machine has been built developed and how you've seen from that presentation, it is rolling off the factory and into customers right now. Asin, I'd like to welcome you onto the webinar. Hello, Peter, and welcome everyone. I'm pleased to attend to this webinar. I'll talk a little bit about the Volvo journey towards electromobility. Now, Asin, we've spoken before, and this journey is certainly quite impactful because a lot of us that are on this webinar know Volvo for being an equipment manufacturer in the plant sector. But you do a little bit more and you've been on this journey for a little bit longer than we were expected. So please tell me a little bit about where we are now and what you do. Yeah, as you can see on this slide, we are not only present in construction and industry, but also on road in city and at sea. So the, we are a large group, employed about 100,000 people around the world. And uh, I would say that we are really taking advantage of uh, being a large group because we can share our technology, especially in the electromobility area. So it's innovation from all our brands. And as you have seen in this uh, video introduction, we do not only think about the future, but we, we build it. And it's in all our business areas, you will see. And I think what's really interesting to me is, uh, you know, this is not just about the UK market. This webinar is obviously with your dealer, SMT GB. This is actually looking at the global nature of what is really happening out there. Now, I've got an electric car, folks, because I'm talking about electrification, and it would be rude of me not to go down the electric route, because I believe in some of the, the key impacts that electric's going to make. But, Sin, talk to me about some of these global mega trends that have actually looked at why you are doing this right now and some really exciting news that's coming up. 
Well, well, Peter, we are really facing to, to a dilemma first. The, the population is growing. The forecast is uh, to be 10 billion people in 2050. And knowing that two thirds of the population is expected to live in big cities by 2050. So air pollution obviously become a public health emergency with horrible costs for the, for the society. So uh, we are really at a tipping point with no point of return. The, the question is no more if or when the uh, switch to electromobility will happen, but how fast it will come. So mega trends, as you can see in this slide, are obviously air quality, growing e-commerce, new technologies and new societal demands. And this move is really, really accelerated by the pandemic 19, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. So all in all, the world is moving towards a more environmental, mindful and sustainable future. And that's also include the construction industry. Yes, and I think what's also interesting as well, we're, we're actually trying to move to a more productive society full stop. And obviously we'll come on to this later on, but electric takes us down a totally different avenue with productivity as well, because they're super quiet, aren't they, Sim? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I, I mean, if we talk now about the uh, how to respond to these uh, mega trends or challenges, so at Volvo, we believe that it's all about having a strategic framework based on these mega trends. And the long only long-term ambition we can have when we talk about prosperity is to have products that are 100% safe, 100% more productive, and 100% fossil free. So safety has been our core value since the very start at Volvo. It's obvious. And productivity is all about increasing degree of automation, more intelligent machine. It's all about data monitoring and also preventive maintenance. And when it comes to fossil free journey, I would say that is our promise to lead and to deliver on Paris Agreement and beyond. So we have a really a firm commitment of the group to strive from fossil free future. And you will see in our, our roadmap. So listen, what does that actually mean, a fossil free future? You, you're, you're saying to me before this webinar that there's a shift and you're not going to do something. What is that something, Asim, before we get into the rest of the presentation? So the, the shift, uh, I would say that's uh, all in all, I would say an engagement that we took from the, uh, from the group. I mean, we need to uh, get rid of uh, diesel. That's obvious uh, because uh, as you have seen in the previous slide, we are really at a tipping point and Volvo C would like to, to take the lead and drive it so that we can really uh, demonstrate that we have this ambition to strive from fossil free, uh, as I mentioned. And how we will all of this in concrete if you, you, you now move to the, the uh, roadmap, you will see that we have a, a fast piece introduction on trucks and bus side, a massive rollout, as you can see really on the screen, that has already, already started. So 10 years experience on uh, bus side lead now to battery electric bus that is now up and running in many cities around the world. And from truck side, we are, as you can see, in series production when it comes to medium duty. Uh, that is serve important segment, that is distribution, waste, uh, recycling, and both in Europe and US. And in coming years, that's also what you can see in the slide, we are continuing to, to gear up and roll out this in relevant segments step by step. And Peter, fuel cell will also be part of this equation. A fuel cell, now that's quite interesting because that's something which everybody's looking at, how on earth can we take electrification into larger equipment and fuel cells are going to be a, a really important part of that because refueling of those machines that are working sometimes huge really really long shifts and that we're looking at bowsers in in the the normal diesel scenario is going to be really important but sin you did tell me you're going to get rid of diesel and i didn't believe you so tell me <laughs> what was that all around because it's like getting rid of diesel what's going on here so, as I said, we have a battery, of course, and it's obvious, but also fuel cell in the equation, especially for heavy duty application. And you have to know, uh, Peter, that we, uh, we have signed a joint venture with Daimler with the purpose to, uh, I would say, share a development uh, on fuel cells for our uh, respective uh, applications. So it's also a statement to the society, two big players, Volvo, Daimler, both commit, uh, committing to fuel cells, to hydrogen. So it's also a big signal for the society, meaning that uh, the, the two, two big companies are also, uh, in some extent, we are challenging others also to, to step into investigating, investing, sorry, in production and, and also the uh, related infrastructure when it comes to to fuel cell. 
And so here. That's the great the great thing about that is then is you you're actually already doing this electrification have been doing for some time. So we see the buses and the trucks uh, that are actually all of that information that you've gathered from doing this electrification project on those industries is now transferring, isn't it? But I've got something really cool that I want to show uh, to the audience now. And this is a really quite interesting, different approach that is already out there that we're gonna be able to see potentially coming into construction. So let's take a look at this folks. And Asin, if you could, I've taken the audio out of this because I want you to explain what is going on right here. Yeah, this is basically also to show our capabilities at, at Volvo. So we are working on three disruptive trends, automation, electromobility, and connectivity. And we, we believe that it will lead to substantial benefit of, uh, for our customers. This is also how the Volvo Group has shaped uh, its uh, organization to better master the new technologies. The example here that you, you can see in the, in the screen in, in this video is an example of what we can, I would say, achieve with, with uh, talking about automation, connectivity, and uh, electromobility. So this is a prototype. It's first electric, connected, and autonomous solution designed for repetitive assessment in logistics centers, factories, and ports. So that, that's the, the purpose of the of this uh, prototype that, that you can see uh, in this screen. It's not on a uh, it's not on a car. It's a truck, but without a cab because we don't need any more cab now since uh, everything is automated in that in that prototype. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about automation here is that actually that autonomous vehicle technology is now going from there to here, isn't it, Asin? Which is basically an autonomous vehicle um, on site on a construction quarrying application, which actually is not a massive autonomous vehicle. It looks quite small to me. I mean, look at the size of it in compared to that wheel loader. What is going on here? The same. This is yes, I mean, automated. it's exciting. It's exciting as an engineer, as you can see here, because when we move to electrification, so we, it's open up for a lot of, I would say, design uh, possibilities. So here we basically move to big elephants, you know, these big articulated haulers to small ants. So uh, here, the, the purpose of this project consisted to partially electrify a quarry. Uh, I mean, uh, using a battery, electric, and uh, autonomous uh, load carrier. We, we are using eight, eight of them into that project. And the, the, the goal consisted to cut by 95% the, uh, the uh, total, uh, I would say, emission on the site, and also to reduce the uh, total cost of, of uh, ownership. So that's really also a, a great achievement we, we have performed uh, at Volvo C. And I think that's really interesting because people always see excavators waiting to load really big trucks. And we see it in mines and stuff like that. But actually to take the concept of the ants and the ants, obviously we've all seen how many ants you can get to move material. That means it's almost like a conveyor belt, isn't it? And so yeah. activity actually comes in and what you can do for smaller things that, that, that can't have these huge autonomous trucks in them like mines in the uh, in the Australias, for example. But you can see that this can work in a quarry application where actually you need yeah. to feed a, a processing hub, but you don't need to feed it in a massive amount of, uh, of material at any one time. So that really does make a big, big difference, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so the, the, as I told you, now, I mean, with electrification, automation, connectivity, it's, it's a really a, exciting as an engineer because it's really open up to, uh, I mean, the, the, the only limitation you can have, it's your brand because uh, the, you can do a lot with the electrification, as you can see here on this screen. It's a, a total shift on the concept, vehicle concept, having no cabs, you know, autonomous machines, uh, talking one to, to the other. So just then supervising, uh, supervising the, the whole site. So it's really, uh, I would say, in sh a shift in the technology and that uh, we are really uh, engaged uh, uh, in the group. As you can see here in this slide, it's not only on trucks and bus, but also in the construction industry segment. So uh, we, uh, in line with the Volvo Group strategy, we are also developing uh, at Volvo C technologies that are co connected, uh, also intelligent machine and total site solution that we uh, I hope and I believe that will benefit to our customers and the uh, environment. Well, certainly when I'm looking at this, it's it's obviously a paper because you haven't got a cab. You've, you've got that fossil free application because your ants can go and take themselves away to be charged um, so that you can bring more ants that are charged 
as such into that equation. And productivity wise, you are never, and this is a really important, the prime mover, either the wheel loader or the excavator is never idle when you've got a situation like this. So that is really, really exciting. And obviously, when you look at all that together, it's got that huge amount of productivity all connected in together. Oh, gosh, I'm really excited about that. And we're not even here to talk about that today. So that's really brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Tim. So what we are here to talk about, however, is the two new electric machines that you're bringing in. And basically, what's interesting is you've actually put the two together as an excavator and a wheel loader, where actually we've just talked about the way wheel loaders and excavators work in a construction environment. So fantastic to see this. So tell me about this sort of why we've brought two different units rather than just an excavator onto the market. Please. Yeah, Peter, here it was really, really an important decision for the group. As the uh, group president mentioned in, in your video for the introduction, we do not only think about the future, but we build it. Thanks to the successful unveiling of uh, all these concept machines, so Volvo really took Volvo C an important decision for its future because uh, in a pioneering commitment to future technology, we have announced that we will begin to launch a series of a compact wheel loader and excavator, uh, electric excavator range, stopping the diesel based engine development on these products. So it means that whoa, every whoa, whoa, new whoa, whoa, project. Whoa, 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 one minute. Did you say the word stopping diesel on these machines? Yeah. That's your commitment, as I said, to the future technology. So it means that every new project will be electric. We are stopping uh, diesel-based development on this uh, compact machine range. And with this move, Peter, Volvo C became the first construction manufacturer to really commit to an electric filter on this compact machine range. I'm sorry to say that is an absolutely huge commitment. I mean, we're taking diesel, uh, and these are not small machines, as in. We're taking diesel out of the equation in the future. So that is just massive for the, the electrification and massive for a, from a global perspective. So when I talk about you know, diesel and electric, we, we normally talk about the fight offs between the two. But when you're going to be playing with Volvo in the future, not too distant, there's not going to be that there at all. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's our commitment to the future. I, I, as I said, we, we are, I mean, we would like to demonstrate and also take the lead in, into that direction to show that it's not only talk, but it's facts. That's, uh, that's how we, we see it. Well, you mean, I saw today in the news Jaguar Land Rover were taking Jaguars completely electric, but I never <laughs> expected to really take Volvo in this class range completely electric. That's incredible. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remind people slightly of the launch um, that had for this product, because it's not something that's literally just come rolling off. It's something you've developed for a while, isn't it? And we launched it at a small exhibition a little while ago. Tell me about all these lovely people at an exhibition where we could all get together and not be socially distant whatsoever. It was a massive, massive launch, wasn't it? Tell me about it. Yeah, absolutely. So since the announcement, we have seen a fast development on the, the two products. As you can see, this picture is, it, it happened in, uh, in, at Baumachot in Munich uh, in mid-2019. And here you can see it was really crowded of journalists and visitors when we have unveiled the, 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 those two machines. So that was really, really a great event also uh, for, for Volvo and especially also for our customers to, to see the, 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 two, uh, the two prototypes. And what we've done since then um, is you've taken those pieces of equipment and you've gone out and field tested them because this is the most important thing. You know, bringing out new equipment, great. You know, if it's a, the next diesel up, we know it's going to work. But electric machines, really important, isn't it, to make sure that that process is undertaken. Tell me about this. <laughs> Yeah, it was also a great, great journey because it was also a, a, a really close collaboration with our with our customers. So, we, as you can see here in this in this movie, uh, extensive tests have been performed with a very lot of positive feedback. We'll talk a little bit about feedbacks later on, but uh, I would say uh, operators were really really impressed by the uh, machine performances. So, the electric motor gives faster, thinner uh, movements uh, and feeling of high power compared to the conventional one. So, and also uh, noise may make uh, noise level made a huge impact also. So, uh, and uh, one of the great achievements, Peter, it's also that we have been awarded in Paris, you know, 
It was the end of last year. The two machines have been awarded in, in Paris. So it was also a great, great achievement for, uh, for the, the two products and uh, for Vomposi. So what is that award that you're taking about there? What does that say? What does that award uh, give? Yeah, it, it's a big, a, a big event that happened in, in Paris. And here it's an award about uh, yeah, sustainable development, I, mean, I would say. Uh, so uh, for the two machines, it, it was also a premiere because usually it's uh, only one product that is awarded. But here uh, we had, the, the award was given to the, for the two machines. So uh, really, really great achievement. And you've also done something else, because obviously it's not just Europe this product is for, is it? It's actually for the rest of the world. Tell me about this. It's not Europe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, it's a <laughs> nice, nice movie. So th this one, you have to know that also Volvo C was awarded uh, 2 million grant uh, for commercial pilot of the two machines in California. So this video it was taken in, in California uh, because we are also running a test uh, with our uh, customer partners here in California. So you can see it's in the middle of uh, desert. Also, it shows the machine's capability to work in very harsh conditions. Yeah, and I think that's really important because, you know, obviously in Europe, we've got extreme cold probably more than extreme heat. But, you know, this product is going out throughout the world and, and of course you know when we when we hear about technologies and things like that heat and extreme cold it's important that they're tested in the correct way isn't it and obviously where the product's from it can be a little bit cold uh, <laughs> where it's actually made in uh, Sweden and such but so uh, from there we've gone on to the next sort of phase for me and this is actually getting this equipment on site so Efarge is the name of the company that's in the joint venture by the way for HS2. So this is a big move to get Efarge receiving the first one. It might be in Paris, but you know, they're part of a big project in the UK. So they're really focused on it. Tell me about this and how they've received the, the information. Yeah, uh, first Peter, you have noticed that uh, with this video, that way it's not, we are not now anymore talking about prototypes, because it's now real deliveries, real customers and uh, real production. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, we have also prepared or on production as well of the wall supply chain, as you have seen in this video. So now we are ready to ship them to our clients. And the first one, one of the first one, as you have seen, this is FH, because we really see now a uh, demand from our customers to, to meet their own uh, self uh, set lower emission goals. And we believe uh, that now we have products or option uh, to, to support them to, 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 to reach these targets. We really see now um, a, a shift also from our customers I mean, to green technologies. And this is obviously uh, one of the great examples that is shown here with the, with the FH. And what I like about this video is it shows you've got loads of them uh, being ready to load up. So it's great to see that a lot of them are going out to customers uh, all over the region. But um, one of the other things that strikes me about the electrification is this, the, the challenge of people are starting super small in some cases, but you've started quite large, but there's something else that uh, you've let us in. And this is a bit of an exclusive for me. I didn't know about this. So I'm gonna let this roll first, folks, because this is electric going slightly bigger. Yes, Peter, well, we, we are at the beginning of this uh, exciting journey. So here you can see one a step further into a journey towards electrification, a massive, a big uh, EC230 that we are going also to electrify. And it will be first used in uh, Korea, in South Korea as a uh, market pilot, because here uh, Volvo Construction Equipment was selected as a smart construction technology provider for a smart uh, city that would be uh, that will occur in Korea, and uh, that's the purpose of this uh, EC230 that will come to Europe later on for sure. So uh, here, so you can see a roadmap. So we have started with a smaller machines first because it's where the demand is, especially in urban application. As you can see, this. Uh, compact machines, and it's so obviously also good for us, good for our business, and also more easy from the technology perspective. And also, it's a good way to enter into this uh, uh, emo world for us, for dealers, for customers, and we have uh, learned a lot. And then now the, we will uh, continue to roll out in uh, larger machines, as you can see here in the roadmap. And uh, obviously, connectivity, fuel cell, recuperation will also be part of this uh, equation.
So you can see here, we have a, our ambition is very big, I would say, towards this uh, electromobility journey. Well, it certainly is. And I think what's interesting is we're looking there at the, the new excavators. We're also looking at medium-sized wheel loaders, not that far away. And that is a big power machine. You know, that's used an awful lot on, uh, in waste applications, different applications, but almost sometimes, you know, used big, huge 12, 13 hour shifts um, and things like that. So we are talking about a really big commitment here. You put the, the, the timeline right there, that commits you to that. And so we're gonna have to see these products rolling off, but let's quickly move on to this sort of, the more generalist offering about electrification, because obviously we've got the vehicles, you can see that on the, the left-hand side. You've got your partnerships with SMT GB, so the maintenance and repair and the engineers are there. And we're going to talk about that a bit later. But also, we've got the whole element of what I call the charging solutions piece. Um, and that's not just from a charging solutions. There's something new that you want to talk about there as well, with, a, with an energy whole piece from Volvo, isn't it? Yes, for sure, Peter. You know, this is uh, the technology is new, so it's uh, it open up for new business models. And obviously, we will not only offer electric machines, but all the services that goes along in supporting the, uh, the this new technology. So <laughs> it will be all about uh, charging solutions, also about uh, connectivity, maintenance, and so on. That's really the, the purpose of this site. It will be a, a total electric offering, not only uh, electric machines, of course. And end of life offering us in because this is not just hey charging solutions for now it's actually when these uh, machines actually come to the end of their life or end of their battery life because you know depending on how they're being used it might be able to literally just pop another battery in um there's something exciting happening there with volvo as well isn't it yeah, uh, you know, you have to know that recently, maybe it's a scope, a scope sorry, uh, we, are, we have created a new business entity, which is uh, Volvo Energy, that will also support uh, in regards to the charging solution. But also the, the aim is to offer a second life for, for, for batteries, especially for uh, big power bank or for uh, mobile solutions also to support our, our machines. So, I would say, as I said, this is a, a really global view. It's not only offering electric machines, but all the services that goes along in supporting the uh, electrification and also about recycling. And that's what they're going to do, folks. They're going to take the batteries, recycle them and reuse them. And that's exactly uh, what we need. And so, Asin, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you now uh, because we're going to go and talk to your colleagues at SMT GB to see what this means for the UK uh, marketplace. So thanks very much for spending time with me today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you all. Time to move on, folks. Now, folks, yes, it may say add silence, and believe me, they are quiet, but uh, it's time to bring in another one of my guests now, Charlie Flores, who's actually part of the team at SMTGB. But, Charlie, you've been uh, looking at uh, Volvo equipment for some time, haven't you? Tell me a little bit about your background before we go and talk about the real machines coming into the UK. Hi, Pierre. Good morning, and uh, welcome to the everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Uh, yeah, I've been with Volvo for 42 years now and spent the last uh, 22 working for the compact side of the business, uh, looking after the minis up and down the country. So it's, uh, it's great to look at our new offering from Volvo in the compact side of the business. Uh, having been there 22 years, we've seen many changes uh, and right through to the path to zero emissions now, which is uh, really exciting and different. And Charlie, that's what I brought you on to talk about because the you know huge experience there means that you know we've got a big transition to make, and SMTGB have actually been building themselves up um, to do that. But let's talk about the machines, Charlie. Tell me about that. These are the sort of 
key features across both of the machines and then we'll come to the machines themselves with their individual yeah. features give me a quick run through about the the machines charlie well, on the excavator side of it, we, we've taken that from the, the original ECR25 we have in, in place at the moment, the diesel version. And they've taken all the good points and everything, moved it across and, and electrified it. And we've still got the power, the, you know, the ability, everything that we had in the, the diesel machine. In fact, we've got enhanced performance on that, uh, Peter, with better tear out force and everything on that. And same on the loading shovel, you know, we, the loading shovel has actually got better breakout force and everything, quieter, you know, it's a lot quieter to use, quieter for the operator, quieter for the people in the street, everything. So, you know, everything's a positive towards it. And Charlie, I think what's really interesting is, you know, the, the bringing those two uh, products together and, you know, taking away nothing of the Volvo product and offering um, to the marketplace, but enhancing mm. it. So people, this is a Volvo machine. It will feel like Volvo. It looks like Volvo, but it's just super quiet. And let's take a look at one of those machines right now, Charlie. We're going to take a look at the ECR 25 in action. This is with great pleasure that I'm introducing to you today the ECR25 electric, first ever serial produced and distributed electric excavator of this size class by Volvo. Based on its diesel equivalent, the ECR25D, it displays the same features that made it a success, such as a true zero tail swing, a boom offset cylinder located on the left hand side. A uh, hydraulic filtration system patented by Volvo in 50 hours greasing intervals all the way down to the last pin of the arm. With an extra weight of 200 kilograms, it, lift, it ends up at 2,700 kilograms and still is capable of being transported on a trailer at a total weight of 3.5 tons. It displays the exact same lifting capabilities and digging forces as the ECR25D diesel and comes with compatibility with the same Volvo attachment range. So not only does it come with all the benefits that we all know uh, of this machine, but it also comes with all the benefits from the electrification. First thing off, there's less maintenance because batteries and electric motors are maintenance free. It also brings more comfort and less fatigue thanks to reduced vibration. But of course, it's local emission free, which means you can work indoor without fume extraction systems. You can work in large cities that, has, uh, that have um, carbon emission reduction targets and there's no muffler, so it blows less dust and doesn't leave suit mark on walls. And finally, it's much more silent than a diesel machine. This one comes with 84 decibels external noise, which compared to a diesel, would, that would be 93 decibels. And you gotta remember, this is not a linear scale. So nine decibels difference means that this would take eight machines like this to be as noisy as an ECR25D. It comes with a three kilowatts onboard charger that you can trigger with the charging switch inside the cab and once the charging process starts it automatically locks in for more safety and theft protection. But the secret ingredient behind this electrification comes under the hood. Let's check it out. The Volvo ECR25 electric comes with a 48 volt lithium iron battery which is the latest technology in electrification. It holds 20 kilowatt hour of electricity and is completely maintenance free. It can handle fast charging, charging at any point of time with no memory effect. With this capacity, it's got a net operating time of up to four hours depending on application. And bear in mind that this size of machine typically spends 40 to 50% of their time idling, which doesn't happen on these machines because of the start and stop system. And of course, the little maintenance left on these machines is made easy by being very accessible, such as the hydraulic filter located here. All of our electric compact excavators come compatible with fast charging with the optional external fast charger that Volvo has developed. And with this fast charger, you can get a full charge in about one hour. 
In terms of charging options, it comes standard with three different capabilities with one cable of overnight charging on the onboard, charge, onboard charger over here. And last but not least, we kept the spacious cab of the ECR25D, but upgraded it with a new HMI. It has a five inch color display controlled by a jog wheel, offers three different work modes, echo, standard, and boost. And the echo mode essentially control the maximum RPM that you can work with. Please note that with electric, the uh, RPM only affects the speed of execution because unlike a diesel engine, it doesn't collapse when you start forcing with it. And so you can get the same amount of power at 1400 RPM or 2400 RPM. And just for fun, I was not kidding when I was saying these machines are incredibly quiet. Thank you for watching. Well, Charlie, they are super quiet, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, what a difference. What a difference it makes. But yeah. you know, let's just go over those key points again. And I think, you know, we want, I wanted to, in this section, actually go through some of the actual key points for maintenance as well, because it's important that people understand the difference between the two units. So let's talk about some of these key um, features that we're going to have on the machine, Charlie, and start with uh, the, the elements to the left of the screen for everyone. Yeah, as I say, we've got the same performance as the diesel engine, if not better, Peter, and it's ultimately really quiet. I actually sat in one yesterday, and you get a little whirring noise from it, but really quiet for the, and for the comfort of the operator and for those working round about it. And as I say, in the zero tail swing, it's actually reduced tail swing from the conventional machine because of the weight of the batteries. We actually don't have to put the extra counterweight on to get to the same uh, weight uh, as the conventional machine. So when you look at the rear end, there is actually less uh, overhang than the, than the standard machine. And it's it's running at the same weight of 2.7, again, towable machine for transport. Yeah. Uh, and again, all the front corners, everything is within the track frame. So wherever he was working close to a building, anything at all, there's no chance of damaging the machine or catching anything. So it makes a huge difference to, to the operator when he can just concentrate on the actual work he's doing. He doesn't have to constantly be looking to see if he's going to catch something. And again, on the, the maintenance side, everything is so easy to get ground level, walk around. And it's it's only, as he says, a 50, 50 hour uh, greasing interval. So it's once a week, really, for uh, for greasing and things like that. I think, Charlie, what's really interesting about this is people often worry about the heaviness of a battery. In this case, mm. that heaviness has, has been able to integrate the design of the battery. And I think that's absolutely incredible. And of course, we've got a lot less components within this machine, haven't we? And sort of the, the, the standardization of all of the features allows us to really extend some of that um, life of maintenance and also, you know, get the access is, is very, very simple, isn't it? To fill up the, the general things that people would normally do. Yeah, the, as I say, there's no engine oil to change, no water to check, nothing like that, Peter. So batteries totally maintenance free. So you've really just got your hydraulic level on the back to, to check and see. And as they said in the video, the, there's a, a small glass bowl, which we'll see in another uh, photograph. But that is a really key feature of Volvo. All the external lines come back into that. So you've got total protection of your hydraulics. It's a fully sealed system. You can't put oil into the tank without going through the actual filter. So it is uh, a really well-protected system, which only Volvo has. Well, what's really interesting is let's make, when we look at this comparison, Charlie, mm. it's but everything is virtually the same uh, that we can see there. But, you know, we've got this increase, it, unbelievably, in tear out force. Yeah. In, how have we managed that? Is it just the nature of the, the engine? What, what happens? I think it's the nature between the engine and the electric. As you said, there's no dieback in the, in the electric. It's consistent, whereas an engine fluctuates up and down. Uh, whatever you're doing in, in different modes, whereas that just stays static all the time. So I'm, I'm sure that's where they've, they've gained that extra power and in, in things in the in the engine or in the, the battery side of it, the electrification side of it. So, uh, you know, it, it really is a nice piece, piece of kit, smooth to operate. 
as you say, it's a lot smoother because you can adjust the control. You don't have to be flat out as, as a normal diesel engine would be to get the full power on the machine because of the consistency of the electric. So it makes a huge difference uh, on that. And we see at the bottom there, folks, we've also got that big number there, the, the 30 kilowatt. And that's because, like we know with electric, full power, isn't it, when, it's, when, when we can? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a massive change in concept altogether uh, from that, uh, Peter. No, it's good. So looking at the back, the all-important back of the, uh, of the excavator there, you know, yeah. we talked about this, this thing in the middle here, you know, which, is, which has got the hose going into it, about that being one of the, the key points for Volvo. Tell me about that. Yeah, as you see, Peter, all the hoses coming to the bottom, that comes, that's all the feed drain lines coming back from all the different systems. And if there's any issues at all with the machine, everything comes back through that and through the filter before it goes back to tank. Uh, and this is unique to Volvo, because as you see the tank, there's no actual entry into the tank. Everything going into the system has to be put through this filter. So there's, there's less chance of any contamination going through the machine or going into the system. Uh, plus we've got an external filter as well. So it is a real, we've been running this on all the models for quite some time now with a great success. Uh, and if you have a, something in the system, it breaks up or an external, like a breaker on it, it shows up very quickly and can be traced in, uh, to where the damage is, you see. So, and that shows a, really a lot to uh, hmm. the uptime capabilities of these machines, isn't it? Which is really, really important because people are wanting to know. I mean, that's highly visible. You can see when your filter needs to be changed as well. So it, it's really important that we're taking through that success into the electrics, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. They've used all the best technology moving forward from what we've had and uh, all, everything is tested. So they're, they're good capable machines before and they're just adding more value to it. That's all, Peter. And we see there is a, a nod to electric here, Charlie, in our next picture. But while looking at this picture here, it's all about visibility, isn't it? And it's all about the compact nature of this machine, isn't it? Yeah, as you see, if you're sitting in the cabin there, you can virtually see every corner of the machine from the cabin without having to stretch or lean forward or anything. And with everything is within the track frame. So you know if the track frame's in that space, you're quite happy to turn without damaging any of the upper structure. So it, it really is a compact machine for its size. Uh, and it still has the capabilities of a, to load a truck or uh, dig deep or things like that. That's where I think starting at this level instead of the one and a half tons being good because it's a, it's a real good utility machine for uh, even lifting if it's got check valves and you want to lift something, it can lift five, 600 kilos, no problem, uh, with the, provided it's got the check valves on it. So it makes a difference if you're doing works with that. And I think you've got to say, Charlie, at the moment, utilities in particular, getting us fiber optics into our houses and stuff like that is important. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, would we? Uh, yeah. I'm on a fiber optic cable right now. So um, fingers crossed it will keep working. But, you know, this is the kind of thing utilities, they need to do things quickly and eff effectively, don't they? But with that compact radius. So, you know, having this machine size allows you to do things a lot quicker, doesn't it? And it allows that to move on a lot quicker and as to sort of build back better, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's massive uses for this, Peter. Utilities, because they can work night and day in, in urban streets and city centres, as they say, with the low emission zones coming in. You know, it, this is going to have a big impact on, on that. And even underground tunnelling, things like that, there's going to be a lot of HS2 tunnelling and things. So electric machines will be fantastic for that. Even the loading shovel, where they're working in tunnels and, and things where you've no emissions. Uh, you'll have electrification anyway because you'll have fans running, you'll have drilling rigs running in electric. So the electric power is going to be there to charge the machines anyway. So it just adds sense to take an electric excavator and then load and shovel in with it. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see there, folks, just to reiterate that, the, the, the easy electric charging point on there. But Charlie, let's move on now. Um... Less noise no local emissions, less maintenance, and less vibrations. That is what you get on top with our L25 Electric. The L25 Electric is a five-ton wheel loader with a total height below 2.5 meters and a width of 1.8 meters. On the pellet forks, we have a payload of two ton on 80% according to EM norm. Our L25 electric 
powered by a 48 volt system with the newest lithium ion battery technology. Our battery capacity is 39 kilowatt hours gross, which enables us to use the machine net 3.5 to 6 hours nonstop. These batteries are enabled to be fast charged and they can charge at any point in time as they have no memory effect. Further on, they are maintenance free. We have as well a three kilowatt onboard charger on our machine for the overnight charge. With that one, we can charge the machine in 12 hours from zero to 100%. Less maintenance comes also together with our machine. Under the hood, we have just two maintenance points. We have the coolant for the inverters and the drivetrain, and we have the hydraulic oil with the filter for the hydraulic system. On this side, we have our charging interfaces. Under this flap, you can find your interface for the fast charging as well for the overnight charging. Our L25 electric can be charged in two different ways. One way is to charge the machine with our standard onboard charger from 0 to 100% in up to 12 hours. The other way is to charge our machine with our optional fast charger from 0 to 100% in less than 2 hours. With our standard charging cable, which comes along with our machine, you have three possibilities to connect your charging cable to your grid. One possibility is to use the 400 volt 16 amp CE socket. The second possibility is to use the 200 volt 16 amp CE socket. And the third possibility is to connect your charging cable to your household grid. Additionally to our standard charging cable, you can also charge our machine with a type 2 plug on a public charging station. In our electric machine, we have a two electric motor concept for highest energy efficiency. We have one electric motor purely dedicated for the working hydraulic and steering with a peak power of 32 kilowatt. We have a second electric motor purely dedicated to our driveline. The electric motor is directly connected to the rear axle through the gearbox. With that, we assure highest efficiency on the drivetrain. The electric motor for the driveline has a peak power of 36 kilowatt. On our machine, we have our well-known comfort cap with a wide and safe three-point entry and the best visibility. With our new L25 electric, we have implemented our new innovative and intuitive HMI. With the new HMI, you can easily choose your working mode. Further on, each single mode can be preset and saved according to the needs. For example, you can adjust your traction force to the ground conditions, or the sensitivity to the driver's preferences. Our L25 electric is equipped with the well-known set bar, with the set attachment bracket and the integrated quick coupler. With that we provide high breakout forces, a superior roll back and dump angle and excellent parallel movement on pallet forks. Well, Charlie, we see again there, well, we heard how quiet it was. I tell you what, before we move on, Charlie, I would love to have one of these machines just to be able to go to a public charging point and charge it up, because that would be just brilliant. <laughs> I think we've definitely got to do that um, together. But equally, what was really struck me in that video is you've got a machine that can carry its own spare battery pack um, onto site to actually charge it up. I mean, that's brilliant, isn't it? You know. 
Yeah, you've got, as you said there, you've got all the options uh, from the public charging right through to the, the big charge that you can take on site and plug in and then plug the machine in. Again, if you're setting up a site and everything, you've got that option to do that, Peter. Uh, plus, we've got uh, charging options that you can build into buildings and things. So, you know, if it's working on a in a builder's merchants or a, a warehouse, you know, you've always got that there on hand. To, it can be built in and, and charged at lunch times and things like that. So the, the machine's always charged, as you said. You don't have to wait till the batteries run down. You can charge it any time, and it has no detrimental effect on the batteries. So, it means when the machine's not being used at lunch times or break times, you can you can constantly top up so it's never going to actually run out this fear of running out is uh, is eliminated by that i think it's a it's a total culture change for us all the the battery charging situation yeah and i think you know what's really interesting charlie is again you've got a volvo machine it's a volvo machine it's got all the attachments as mm. we said there um tell me a little bit of this z attachment bracket i don't understand what that is so, so people might not be familiar with the, the volvo products what is that yeah, the Z attachment bracket is it's a it's a, a Volvo concept that gives uh, you can uh, drop off and uh, attach any any forks, bucket, brush attachment uh, with just the flick of a switch in the cabin. So and it gives parallel lift, as you said, with the forks. So and and, and it's a really good breakout force when you're actually digging performance with a good rollback. So you know it's it's quite a, a unique. Well, it's not unique to Volvo, but uh, it is uh, unique for that type of machine uh, on that side. And it allows, as you said, you know, and as we've seen, a, a lot of versatility uh, within that space, doesn't yeah. it? And, um, you know, what, what's really interesting about the machine I saw with all the modes and stuff that you can do. And so to explain to me as well, this sort of electro hydraulic control and, and how, you know, the different modes as well can be used. Yeah, we've got that. As you said, we've got two we've got two motors on that actual machine because you're doing two totally different functions. You've got one function, a motor driving the actual hydraulics and steering. So when you're actually doing that part of it, this, the actual drive side of it's not interfering. Uh, it's not drawing power from that. So you've got two separate systems that's working together to give you the best out of the whole machine uh, and the battery pack being big enough to drive them both at any one time. And with the battery pack being that size, it, it just relates to the taking the engine away altogether and gives you the balance of the machine. And let's then, this, yeah, let's talk about that, shall we? That yeah. Balance. Because obviously, again, it's it's the diesel body and it's been electrified, you know. Mm, yeah. And so let's go through this. Uh, really, we've got the one thing at the top here, which is this electro motor. Um, working at 32 kilowatts, in fact, where obviously we yeah. don't have that electro motor on the diesel, like you said. So that's a that's the big difference, isn't it? Yeah, that's the big difference. It's giving you the power to both sides of the, the, the functions of the machine. Whereas in the engine, if you're using driving power, you're going to lose a bit in the hydraulics or vice versa. So that's totally eliminated by giving it two two motors. So you've got power on both sides of the, of the, the requirements on that. And as I said, in the very early stages of, the, of this webinar, the diesel engine, this one, we don't even get a diesel version of this now. This, this is actually gone. We gone. don't have a, this, this, we, there's not a diesel equivalent to this size of machine now. Uh, it's totally gone. So we're moving on totally to electric on the L25. So folks, forget about this comparison slide. I'm just going to chuck it away, Charlie, because yeah. it's no longer relevant. No. But of course, you know, obviously we've seen all those charging solutions and how it happens. But here, folks, just a slide for you to quickly look at about the, the key differences and elements here are the hours of charge, isn't it, Charlie? How long it takes to charge and, and how that can be achieved. So talk to me about um, those two elements with, with both of the machines, please. With that, Peter, as you say, you've got the, the standard charge where you just plug in the household socket, which is a long-term charge overnight, things like that, which most people will use that and, and charge overnight when the electricity is cheaper and things like that. But if you're working the machine during the day and it needs charged, you can charge at break times with this uh, no difference to the, the batteries or no danger to the batteries and charging at any time. It's ideal that when you stop the machine, you plug it in. You know, if it's on a, as I say, in a, a builder's yard or a, a site, everybody goes for lunch, so it's just automatic. You plug the machine in, so you've got all the different options. Although it says twelve hours charge, five hours charge, and things like that, 
you can split the charging times down a lot less. It's like your car when you travel, you're going to stop for a break, so you have to plug the car in, and that's it's similar to that type of thing. It's a it's a new education to to, to us all, to be honest, Peter. Yeah, it's just a new way of working, isn't mm. it? I think, yeah. You know, when you look at it from that, the top up charging, you do, yeah, I mean, you do it yourself. You put a tenner of diesel in your car or a petrol yeah. in your car, don't you? Just to get you to the end of the day. So yeah. that's perfect. But at the end of the day, with these machines, you're plugging them in and you're not even having to worry about going to get the Bowser or going to, to get uh, that diesel from somewhere else. So that's fantastic. And of course, yeah. just a brief one here. Folks, you know, lots of different charging as we've see, seen there. You know, yeah, we, this is this is the standard stuff that comes with the actual every machine itself. Uh, you've got the five meter cable. The actual part on the main cable is that you can select the amperage for uh, you, you're putting into the machine. It's uh, it self selects as well, but you can select it for that. And then there's just the different options of the the different plugs for uh, the different markets and things like that. So you know, everything the standard stuff is good to start with, and then we can add to that. Uh, I, I guess what with, I love with that is you're not having to go like you do in a car, going into the car or looking on your app or whatever to see where the charge level is. You've got that information there. But that easy. really brings me to the important bit that people that are going to use this equipment uh, in different applications want to know, you know, how can I get power quickly into this machine? And there are these uh, different options, aren't there? Yeah, as you see, there's a the 16 amp uh indoor one which most places will use is uh, quite simply a wall box and again it's, on the excavator it gives it a, a one hour 40 minute uh, char quick charge and three hour 20 minutes on the on the, the quick charge on that you can even reduce that further if you go down to 30 up to 32 i'm sorry uh, on that but again if you're if you're charging throughout the day in different scenarios it, it, you, you don't need to have to wait these lengths of time uh, to actually get the machine back working again and that's just really, really important. And of course, we saw something that was being delivered to site with the machine. And obviously, you know, you can actually get a low loader which can deliver the machine and one, if if not two of these uh, little uh, charging units, which basically these guys are perfect, aren't they, for when you've got an application that may be off grid um, or when you've got something where you know you're going to need that power, but perhaps you know, you've got extra power. Um, and I saw at Con Expo on the Volvo stand, they were hiring solar panels, for example, to go into uh, with the machines at Con Expo. And so that's brilliant. But there's other things as well, isn't there? So talk to me about the way in which we can get the fast charging and we can use other renewable or less carbon impactful fuels. Yeah, again, there's, there's talk of people working with solar pods and, and uh, the wind turbine connected up to the sites as well and things like that and uh, battery packs you know we run di diesel generators on a site during the day and that can build up and build up bat uh, battery packs and things and recharge overnight using that where the site shut down you don't have the diesel generator running at night so it's picking up the the power from the the stored energy um, this large one here is ideal suited for a, a site where you're going to have maybe two or three machines working uh like the HS2, if they're, they're working on tunnels and things like that, and they've got two or three machines underground, they can come and get fast charge on that, where you'll you'll have the power anyway within the cities. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the other elephant in the room, though, Charlie, is the fact that we know people have electric machines and they use diesel generators to help the, get the electricity for them. But I've been talking to lots of people about this. And what's interesting about this, folks, is you can hybridize diesel generators just like you can cars and actually make sure that generator is running at full capacity during the day when generators are generally used to potentially heat um, uh, office cabins or do other work and lighting on site. You can actually hybridize that as well and get the optimization out of that and you can use biodiesel, can't you, Charlie? Yeah, you've got the biofuel, all the thing. Plus, you're not bringing the fuel on the site for the machines as well. So I know it's only a smaller amount, but it's still extra fuel. It's still oils. It's it's all the chance of spillage. Everything. There's all these other extras to to consider. All these other things to consider that you're reducing on site for carbons and uh, potential hazards uh, on for waste and everything. So it, it all nets down to a gain overall. Uh, with it, Peter, it's definitely a, the, the way forward. 
And on that, Charlie, I'll let you off the hook. And um, Thank you, Peter. we're going to move to my favourite subject, people. Um, just with a small interlude, uh, because I'd like to talk a little bit about golf. And um, so here we are, folks. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Peter. Cheers now. Folks, you know, one of the things I'm really uh, interested about with that is actually, you know, you can take this machine and you can actually have it on the golf course without people even worried about the noise and the quietness. But also, you can buy four of them, people. If people shout four, that's because you're going to be buying four off my next guest, who's Dominique Clark. And Dominique is the key account manager who's already sold some of these machines. Dominique, welcome on to the webinar. Hi, morning, Peter. How are we doing? We're doing very well because now we're talking about actually selling some of these machines. And that's why people are here. We want you to buy these machines, folks. We don't want you to just see them looking good on the golf course. Um, so, Dominique, you've already sold some of these machines. And really, the biggest thing that uh, the customers are talking to you about is because they're looking at environment and they're looking at servicing their customers. And so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about are these key points that can actually get people to win work and profit from going yeah. electric with Volvo. So let's take a look at some of those. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. I think um, I think it's really important to put the conversation into context. You know, the realities are the UK has got an extremely ambitious, I think that's fair to say, ambitious target. You know, we're talking about net zero carbon 2050. We're talking about a 68% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2030 compared to, to 1990. And as businesses, we've all got a part to play in this. And I think maybe even up until a couple of years ago, this was a quite a privileged conversation and it was, uh, yeah, you know, we need to start making these movements. But these conversations were associated with cost and with compromise. And from, you know, from speaking with Charlie and I said this morning, my gosh, we are not compromising on this machinery, not at all. And what is what is really powerful is that with these environmental benefits that we'll talk through, actually for these machines, for the industries we're working in, you actually get commercial benefits from those as well. So ultimately, we're all here today to talk about reducing carbon footprint. But actually, when you drill into that and we talk about improving local and national air quality, so that comes essentially from eliminating all emissions at source. Now, that's not only improving the day to day work environment for your, for your operators, for your site foreman, for anyone working on site. But actually, what that also does is it's opening doors, it's broadening your scope of work because suddenly you can work indoors. You know, as Charlie said, suddenly maybe tunneling can be part of your scope of work. So it's it's really interesting how those two um, elements really work hand in hand. When we look at the community and health and wildlife benefits, you drill down into that because you're reducing your risk of land contamination and water pollution. So again, while you're mitigating that environmental risk, what you're actually also mitigating is any potential commercial risk. So we all know at the end of projects um, that there are some really hefty fines to be had if there is land contamination and water pollution. Whereas straight away, by having these uh, machines on your project, you're eliminating that risk. Yeah, and about I, think, yeah. I think, Dominique, you, you know, the things that I'm really seeing with this is, is, one, you look at the factors that are coming into play here. We have had the ability to close roads and closed places in busy city centres in, in particular because of the lockdown and people have done a lot of work. But, you know, closing roads in the middle of a work day when you've got really busy, busy traffic 
is going to really cause major problems. Now, that is a pollutant itself. If we are in a road situation, we've got big tailbacks because we're having to do the work now because the people living around the area aren't going to want us to do that work at uh, 10 o'clock at night, for example. Then you've actually got carbon buildup. So we're not just talking about the emissions right here from the machine. We're talking about the impacts of how you can use that machine, aren't you, to the actual environment and, and that area, which brings me on to this noise element that I want to talk about. And the one thing for me, uh, Dominique, having been on a lot of sites, is when I go onto site and you're going into a sort of tight, confined area, it's the noise for the other people working in, the, in that environment that the machine makes, let alone the pollution, that is a real distraction, isn't it? And, and you know, a distraction for safety as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think the noise nuisance, I think it's it's absolutely key um, in, you know, the customers that I'm working with in actually growing their businesses because suddenly you can work potentially night shifts. You know, if we've got any sort of higher companies uh, listening today, you're talking about potentially doubling your utilisation as well. Um, it's a, it's very, very powerful, uh, the impact that this can have on your business, the, the ad silence element, it really is. Yeah, and I think for me, when you're talking about that, you're actually talking about working again in another way. So mm. we're talking about... Uh, a big thing at the moment, building back better, you can build back better through electrification, folks, but you can also save on the costs because fundamentally, when you're going to a site, you've got to get people to the site there and back. So there's there's movement there, there's carbon there. Then you've got to get people working on a shift and that shift if it's in a city centre and you can only work a set shift pattern, then they've got to go away and come back again. All of this adds up to the environment, the, the impact of having just one machine and all the other things we're talking about. And so, you know, all of those things can help people win work. So if I can turn around and say to people, not only have I got the excavator, I've also got the excavator excavating, putting it into a pile. I've got the wheel loader taking that away and moving that away. And it's all can be done in this tiny, little, tiny little bit of noise. Obviously, there's some scraping of the buckets, you know, depending on what you're doing then actually you've got a, a real profit opportunity there, haven't you? To make a lot of money, but also to make a lot of money with a very, very happy client, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely, Peter, yes. Yeah. Right, so let's take a look at the SMTGB though, because I love the fact that Volvo have made these machines, but Dominic, they're no good uh, unless they're working, okay? And uh, they're no good unless we can understand how the customer has to be helped on the electrification journey, whether that's going from one to four if on the golf course or more, uh, then we need to understand where the support's coming from. Now, I just thought SMTGB was just in the UK, but you're part of a much bigger group. And this makes a difference because, as your slide tells me, there's already a load of electric machines out there, folks, and we're only getting that feedback. Talk, talk to me about what we're learning already right now from the rest of your group in a practical sense. Yeah, so I think this is a really important element, Peter. Not not many people realise the size of the SMT group. I mean, the fact that we've got 34 dealerships across across the globe, 1,600 plus employees. And I think what is um, what's really important about this is infrastructure. So we're sitting here today on the day of launch, GB, you know, launching the first um, L25, ECR25. But actually, you know, and as much as this is an incredibly pioneering move for customers to make this, you know, shift of, as part of their electric journey, you know, for us as their dealer, we are well versed in this. This is not new to us. So when you're talking to your, your salesperson, to your engineer, you're not talking to that person in GB where this is a new product. You're talking to someone who can draw upon the knowledge of 1,600 plus employees, across SMT, you know, our peers in Norway, where they where they know, we know they're a little ahead of us. Um, as I say, Volvo has sold, you know, we have sold 120 electric machines. So we are, we are well versed in the journey, which makes us very well positioned to support you and yours. Um, I'm a big believer in evidence-based knowledge, and we have that in hand. So as much as it is, you know, this exciting pioneering journey, it's really important to note that we do have the infrastructure and the lessons learned um, 
Yeah, yeah, but also, that. Dominique, for me as a customer in the UK watching right now, it's really important that I know that SMT GB has got the facilities to support me. And I know that uh, you've already been working really hard uh, across the group, but also with Volvo about training and, and setting up the electrification process of SMT GB as a provider. So talk to me about the SMTG business. We can see on the slide here, uh, you know, you've got it covered, haven't you? So talk to me about how you got it covered from an electric point of view then. Mm -hmm. I love this, Matt, because I think, again, it just really reinforces that infrastructure that we have to support the business. So the three regions, the eight customer support centres, the 12 sub-dealers, and I think we've got a lot of those on the call today, that's really important element because they are very specialised in the compact side of the equipment. 150 plus engineers with 35 home based and the dedicated machine preparation centre. Now, what, what really rang home for me personally, being involved in the first electric excavator being sold in, in GB, is that, again, drawing upon that experience that we have as a global dealership, that we already had four product specialists before the machine even hit GB, um, which is an incredible statement. So again, I think it's really important to reinforce that yes, this is this is fantastic to hear on day one of launch, but we are we are well versed. So that training, that infrastructure, those processes have already been put in place um, for us to support you. So Peter, we're good to go. <laughs> well, this is it, and we're ready to go. And the, but the other important question, Dominique, is how are you going to get the customers ready and how are you going to get them feeling confident beyond SMTGB? And that's the critical point we're going to move on to next. And that is warranty, because everybody that I know that's buying new equipment really wants to understand how is it going to be supported? What are you doing, putting your money where your mouth is and what's happening with the warranties? So take me through this because there's a big five year at the end of this slide, but take me through the process of the warranty, please, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Peter, do you know what? For me personally, this makes re me really proud because, you know, at the electric journey, it's not a statement. It's not a tick box. This here, which I'm going to explain through now, this demonstrates our commitment to our customers. And I keep using the word pioneering because it is people making this journey is pioneering and there is an, an element of the unknown. But this, exactly this, is, is what we're going to do to support you. So your first two years of servicing are completely free of charge for all the uh, procurement managers that might be sitting on this call to put that into pound amount. You're talking about a four and a half thousand pound cost saving compared to the diesel equivalent. You're looking at then a two year full machine warranty. Now in standard GP equipment, we would only normally do a year warranty. So that two years completely free of charge. Following on from that, Again, just incredibly proud that we're offering a five-year warranty on all electrical components. Um, that is, caveat, that is if we, as SMT, continue to service your machine for the following three years. Um, so, yeah, for anyone who is thinking, oh, the risk, and, you know, there is, uh, you know, um, there is uh, the unknown, isn't it? The electric journey is the unknown. Peter, I know you've just invested in electric car, and I'm, yeah. and, you know, there, there, there are elements of the unknown, but this, this is what we're doing as, as your dealership, as Volvo, to support you in that journey. Well, I think, yeah, that brings us on to, to that support because, you know, the, the products are there. They're tried and tested platforms, which is, again, really, really important from that perspective. Um, but, you know, servicing, you've got to invest, and you have invested a, a, a huge amount of money in actually getting those service vans up to electric service status. Uh, so you've electrified, not quite uh, from that perspective of touching them, but you've electrified the capabilities of the service team, haven't you? So let's talk to me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of servicing, you know, we're talking about where spares consumables, um, all of those costs associated with a diesel engine. So obviously with SMT, you've got your fully trained, um, equipped SMT engineers. I think a really important element and something that, you know, we maybe haven't um, talked about enough is the reduced service time. So, you know, we, we all know what it's like these days. You know, people are, our customers have extremely tight programs, you know, um, and actually, you know, if you look at a thousand hour service alone on a diesel engine, you're talking about a, a seven hour service. Yeah, yeah. On the electric, two and a half hours. Well, that's in and out. That's in and out. 
brick, isn't it? That's yeah, great. I think that's. I mean, I think that's, that's a whole day on site, isn't it? Potentially that you're saving. So the uptime is really quite incredible. When we talk about reduced costs, I know there'll be some customers here who say, "Well, we take care of our own servicing anyways." That's fine, but you're saving on your, you know, your oil, your filters, and actually, if you think about the wastage of those, um, it takes care of all of those costs as well. You've then got no concerns for fuel contamination mitigates the risk of oil spills and I know you touched on that earlier obviously the environmental and the hefty fines that that you know go with that and uh, ultimately obviously you don't need to store any any fuel on site for these machines um so yeah it's uh it's, it's incredibly different um servicing the electric machines and the engineers who were on the, the panel after will, will be able to answer some uh, some in-depth questions about it but the key points to take away are you've got a big impact on our time and a huge cost saving. And Dominique, now the most important bit is, <laughs> you know, nobody's going to buy an electric machine unless it's going to make them some money and unless it's going to pay for itself. So Dominique, this is the most important slide, the end slide of the presentation from Dominique before we go to Q&A sessions, folks. It's the big one, return on investment. So, you know, really there's a massive opportunity here for people to make money and i know people don't want to talk about the big word profit um but you know you're not going to invest in equipment like this bigger equipment bigger capabilities if you don't know you're going to get return on investment and if you don't know you're going to make savings on that overall cost of ownership that life cycle cost so dominic take me through these punchy points sell the machines to me the final bit um before we go to q a off you go so we talk about uh, the retail value. So the electric excavator, we're talking about a retail price of £53,000. We're talking about the L25, we're talking about a retail price of around £89,000. Nobody in here is going to want to talk about that purchase price. It's talking about the lifetime cost of that machine and the impact that machine will have to you as a business. So we're talking about increased uptime. We're talking about condensing your programmes. When you put in your tender, you know, by, by the ability to be able to work at night, to work weekends, to work those antisocial hours, suddenly you've got a huge competitive edge. We're talking about evidence of continual improvement, the ISO 14001. And I think it's really important, the low emission zones are becoming more and more prominent. And you're going to, go, you're going to be able to work within those local authorities. We're going to pound them out. You know, and I said on the service, in the first two years, you're looking at £5,000 saving. Over five years, you're talking about nearly a £10,000 saving. Now, if we look at the fuel savings on top of that, £1,300 a year on average. I think it's really important to point out that that's 2020. We all know what's coming in 2022 with the entitlement of red diesel. So those savings are going to be even more paramount. Um, and ultimately, you know, Hopefully we've proven to you today that this really is a premium machine. And with that, of course, it holds a premium residual value. So finance could be a really fantastic option for you. And I would say, get in contact with your account manager and, and talk about those numbers. But most of all, Peter, I think, you know, I just hope we've made clear today that this is a journey that we're on. And, you know, we have got that infrastructure. We, we want to support you in this journey. Yeah, and thanks so much for supporting me with the webinar. Um, basically, this is a whole new proposition, folks. This is not just a mini excavator. This is an excavator that's a larger size. This is a, then a wheel loader that's coming to match it together on site. They're going to electrify your profitability. You've seen the savings and the warranty savings there. The fuel savings, like you say, are only going to go up or you're going to be reducing the, the impact again on site because you might even go solar. So, you know, the fuel savings could go up because you're getting the solar energy or you're getting the wind turbines or you're hybridizing a generator that's already there. It's all there, folks. And now it's time for us to really get down to the nitty gritty of the questions. And I've got some in the Q&A session already, folks. I'm going to kick this off. We're going to bring some people into the panel that can actually answer these questions. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, and I'm going to kick off the first question um, from me, which has been received from one of my friends in the industry, who's quite keen to get um, their hands on the actual machine, 
uh, itself. And this is Chris Gill, who's from Lynch Plant Hire. He's the uh, plant director that's in charge of looking at machines. And um, so his points here are for the question. The first question I've got, many operators work in cold weather and keep the engine running for heating or in summer for air conditioning. Um, how much is the battery affected by doing this? Um, and also, if we do have the machine working and the heaters are on, you know, how much impact is there there? So um, I, see, I see you popping on there to uh, answer that one. Please go for it. That scene is muted at the moment. Can we hear you? Is that fine? Can you hear me? We're, we're back. You're back in the room. Thank you. OK. Yeah, yes, I, I said it's a, an electric machine. So obviously the, the heater is also electric. So uh, it's obviously consuming uh, in, in the, uh, I would say, from, from the battery. It's putting energy also from the battery. So um, uh, Peter, you have two systems. So either, I mean, on this compact machine range, we don't have, uh, I would say, uh, the, the batteries uh, are not cooled because of the technology of the battery that does not require to, to be uh, cooled or heated up. And uh, in that case, uh, we have an electric heater that's obviously consuming from the battery and i would say it's about five ten percent uh consumption from the from the battery when it's at its maximum power power and uh, for larger machines uh, since uh, the other subsystems needs to be cooled or heated up like the electric motor like the battery then we can take the benefit of having this cooling system to to cool or to heat up the the, the battery so these are two uh, dependent uh, technology based on uh, the um, type of machine, I would say. All right, thank you very much for jumping in on that one. I've got another question for you, I'm afraid. <laughs> You're going to be popular at the moment. Another Chris uh, has asked me a question, uh, and this is Chris Matthew from Flannery Plant Hire. And I talk a lot to Chris, I've done podcasts with him and things like that, about carbon emissions and things like well to track. But you know, quite rightly, Chris is saying, you know, we're becoming increasingly aware of the whole life carbon cost of machines. So what are you doing at Volvo to ensure the embodied carbon is the lowest possible from what we saw, I guess we call it the cradle to grave scenario? Um, and, and how is that uh, being dealt with? I guess that's a, coming on to the Volvo energy bit as well, we've mentioned earlier. Yeah, absolutely. So we are really taking care, in, I mean, for sustainability and carbon, I would say uh, cobalt free reduction is also part of roadmap. And this is also obviously what we are asking our suppliers, I mean, to uh, in terms of uh, in respects. And we, we, we see now that there is, there is a trend, I mean, in coming technologies to re really reduce the, uh, the uh, I would say, the, the cobalt or footprint into the into the battery, because we know that it's, uh, yeah, it's also important for the society uh, in order to, to, to commit uh, into the uh, carbon free reduction. So th that's basically part of the roadmap. And we, we see that new te technologies that is coming in uh, in uh, coming years that will be, yeah, a tend to, I would say, cobalt free. That's obviously, um, yeah, the, the, the threat, I would say. And the cobalt, folks, is like a rare earth material. So yeah, that's yeah. particularly important to reduce the impact of rare earths and stuff so you know there are things happening about that and it's quite exciting uh, i know we've talked our way from this webinar about the whole volvo energy piece so that's a whole new business looking at recycling looking at uh, utilization and looking at new technologies so that's fantastic um so i'm gonna let you off the hook now i think so i think it's time for somebody else to come in and answer this question that we've had on social media as well what is the real benefit of electric plant if it's plugged into a diesel generator on a site to charge obviously you know that's a big thing with people going oh well come on you've got an electric machine and you're actually using diesel to charge it anyway and i've got Ben, who is going to answer that difficult question. Ben, tell me about uh, that question and, and what your thoughts are on that with the machine. Well, thank you, Peter. Good morning. So ultimately, electric vehicles, not just plant, but any vehicle, cars as well, they're only ever going to be as green as the electricity that you use to charge them. But obviously, the benefits of using an electric plant over a diesel variant is not just in the, in the exhaust emissions Obviously, there's going to be environmental benefits due to the lack of a combustion engine and the wares and spares, the filters and consumables that you would associate to that, to that engine. But the real thing to remember and the real benefit of these machines is that it's zero emissions at the point of use. So this allows our customers, our end users, 
more freedom to work in a variety of applications without the usual noise or air quality challenges that they would associate to a combustion machine. Yeah, and Ben, I think I mentioned earlier, but I'm talking to people about that hybridization of diesel generators. We've got biodiesel as well. So, folks, I do think, you know, that that is a, a good question, but I think that the challenges are being met with that as well. And, and with these applications, uh, in some cases, being in um, the actual inner cities, we've got access to electricity more than we've ever had before. So that's quite interesting. I don't know whether this is another one for you, Ben, but I'm gonna chuck it at you and maybe, you know, if you shift to another colleague, if it's not. Um, there's obviously a benefit from working indoors because that's what we talk about a lot with it. It's what we see with electric all the time, but where else do you see an electric machine working and what does the customer look like that's gonna be taking that journey and, and, and winning that work, do you think? I think that's really important, particularly for some of the our higher base customers on this call. So obviously working in, in areas of low ventilation are the obvious applications for machines which, which run an electric powertrain. For example, you've seen a recent spike in, in, in London, London and other cities where there's loads of work going on for basement renovations at the moment, particularly since the first lockdown. But electric machines overcome a number of challenges within our industry. Um, you know, there's, there's a huge opportunity for machines to work, not just in areas of, of low Air, air ventilation but also in areas where there's restrictions on noise i think it was touched earlier uh, on the call particularly utility works reactive utility works where there's there's restrictions like i say this machine gives you the freedom to not continue to do the jobs with zero compromise but to do it at any point during the day there's also other opportunities again with the lack of a combustion engine let's take working around fresh water sources for example if you combine an electrically powered machine with biodegradable hydraulic oil you're mitigating the commercial risk of, of any potential fines due, due to a spillage into that water. You know, again, another example probably could be the railway network, We've got works on, on platforms, really, really um, time sensitive jobs that could incur big, big commercial fines. The ability to use these machines in and around public because of the lack of noise and because of the lack of um, exhaust fumes gives gives our customers and our customers customers the ability to do those jobs without without the, that risk yeah i think that's really interesting ben and i think i don't know again if this is one for you for me as well i mean we've had this one in from a number of people that have talked to me and sent me messages before this event um when are they coming when can i have a demo i can I, are there demo units in the uk right now you know and uh, when can i get my hands on a demo unit and um you know uh, be silent on site ben so our first demonstration machines we're expecting to be landing with us in the middle of march and i think there's also already been a lot of interest in those and um, i'm not sure whether one of, one of my colleagues who've got customers on the call would be better to answer it or not but but certainly in terms of March onwards, we'll be able to offer, offer those demonstration machines. And then we've got free stock coming, coming in, the, in the second half of the year that's available to purchase. Well, fantastic. So the silent march is going to be the silent march, isn't it? So as, as the machines march on down onto different sites. Well, listen, those are the questions I had sent to me before the event from uh, my friends in the industry and on social media. Um, so I'm going to actually uh, turn over to your colleague who has been monitoring this, Helena, um, who's got some other questions, I think, from the Q&A session. So Helena, it's over to you. I'll be quiet for a minute. That's very difficult for me. Hi there, Peter. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's been an absolutely fantastic event, our first one. Um, and what better to uh, promote our new electric machines? Um, so thank you all for your questions. We've had quite a lot coming through, um, which is great. So um, we've had some that have, have already been answered, um, but I think it's it's good to, to get everybody everybody involved. So one of our first ones is Volvo still does not have a micro sub one ton compact excavator. Will there now be an electric micro excavator from Volvo in the near future? So Bill, um, you've, you've said that we, we haven't got a, a micro uh, excavator at the moment. So uh, what's, what's your response on that? Well, we Obviously, we're constantly monitoring, uh, you know, the market needs, and uh, uh, that's, you know, we we understand that it's quite a important uh, machine for the UK market specifically. 
Um, I haven't really got any further comments on the electrification or <clears throat> on this, you know, if we're developing an electric machine at the moment, we don't have a diesel version right now. Um, so I, unfortunately, there's nothing really to share moving forwards. I do understand that that's, uh, you know, it's an important uh, part of the business, um, particularly in the tool hire and uh, in those type of um, uh, retail outlets. Uh, I don't know, Asen, if you want to talk any further about uh, electrification, but all I can say really at the moment is, is that that's, you know, it's, we do look at all of the, the needs in the market and uh, we understand that that is a, a UK, uh, quite a UK specific machine. So we are, you know, we're looking at everything all the time, essentially. <laughs> and um, you said that uh, we've had a, another question for, from Nick Johnson, and he said about the original prototype electric mini excavator used electrical um, actuators rather than hydraulic cylinders. Um, and he was asked why this approach wasn't uh, pursued for the production of the electric excavator. Um, so are you able to explain a little more about um, why you took that, that step? I think uh, Asen and uh, Elodie will probably be the better person, people to speak about that actually than me from the project point of view, if I can pass that over. Yeah. So um, I think Elodie, uh, what would, what, what's your take on that question? Yeah. So maybe when it comes to uh, first, uh, the first question that I was asked to, uh, to Bill, uh, actually, we don't have a clear uh, roadmap when it comes to um, uh, expanding our offer right now. Um, so the idea is that really we review uh, all the opportunities and maybe the electrification will bring some uh, new ones and then we will decide. So uh, no, uh, uh, no plan yet when it comes to a micro machine. Uh, why we didn't uh, launch the um, uh, full electric machine um, right now? So we decided just to be on time uh, to the market because um, um, obviously we were working on that for a while. Uh, you, you've seen the what we called the EXO2 uh, with the, uh, the the green machine with all actuators. So basically, when we we decided to show that, we were as well just trying to see if there was any um, any opportunities on the market for electrification. Now, um, just to be sure that we are on time, that we have something on the market and that uh, we are among the first ones, um, we decided to go with an electrohydraulic offer. And it doesn't, let's say, prevent us from uh, um, investigating other solutions when it comes to the next steps. Great, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I've got another uh, question that's asked about uh, noise levels being uh, lower noise levels being distracting, um, but there's also a concern that those working near and by machines um, that are largely silent are in fact exposed to a greater possible um, risk. And I think this was well picked up by um, Clement, and uh, he's one of our, our Volvo product specialists. Um, and he said about um, the other options or the other um, equipment that comes with a machine that it's not just about the sound of the of the tracking um, that and the uh, and the diesel engine that has obviously been been removed. Um, but we've got other other technology that can help keep people safe. So come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry, my, my connection is a little messed up, so I wasn't sure you could hear me. Um, but yeah, basically, um, all the machines come uh, with travel alarm or reverse alarm for, for the uh, for the wheel loader. And um, but yeah, obviously, what we're, we're, we're as an industry going to have to adjust to these new sound levels in the uh, and rely more on visual cues than, uh, than noise de detection. That's uh, something that operators will need to be trained and, and aware of and get used to. And, and that's something, obviously, with regarding training and operators and um, our, our sales team will make sure and our whole SMT GB support network will make sure that our customers receive the all the information that they need to to operate these um, machines safely. Um, so I think we've we've also got um, another question, um, and I think what's quite interesting is that um, the these 
these uh, electric machines are quite different to the diesel. So when it comes to um, HVAC systems um, being designed and how they're integrated, we had a question about how they're designed and whether they'd be integrated with battery thermal management systems. Um, the response was that there are no um, HVAC systems. Is, is that, that correct, Clement and Bill? That's correct. There's there, there, there's a true heating system, but there's no there, there's no uh, air conditioning uh, available at the moment for uh, for, for uh, autonomy issues. Yeah. Basically. So, I think uh, I think most of our, our other questions have have already been answered, um, and I think our. Uh, Q and A's will, will, our questions will still be coming in um, and there'll be an opportunity for everybody to feedback um, who's been on the call or who'd uh, signed up. Um, there'll be an opportunity to right. give uh, us feedback um, and ask further questions. SMTGB are always going to be on hand uh, to support you and we've got Volvo as well. Um, and yes, we're, we're delighted to be able to support you in your electrification journey. Well, that leads me. Oh, come on, Clement, please continue. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, when I answered about the autonomy and how dependent it was uh, on conditions and in, uh, in applications, there was a, a question prior to, to to the webinar about the impact of usage of uh, hydraulic tools, and basically, this is not what has most impact. This is. Uh, um, so it, it really is dependent on how they're used rather than what tools are used by the, by, by the equipment. Fantastic. That's something right in the uh, Q&A. So. Well, okay. folks, what we're going to do, um, just so that you all know, what we're going to do now is make um, tomorrow probably this uh, presentation available um, so that people can actually uh, be able to view that uh, on social media, but also uh, we'll get an email from the team at SMTGB with the, the full webinar on. And we want to give that out to everybody and to make it available worldwide so that people can share it with anybody that couldn't make it on today. Um, can I just say a big thank you to everybody um, that has come on to the presentation and the webinar. Big thank you to my guests. Uh, a big thank you to SMTGP and Volvo for allowing me to get all excitable and all electric. Um, it's certainly a subject matter that I really, really enjoy. So you'll be hearing more from me on the SMTGB um, products as well as the Volvo machines coming through. Um, so basically SMTGB and Volvo brought this to electrification journey together for the UK. Thanks very much listening and we'll be back in touch with you very very soon goodbye thank you